The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 was one of those wonderful ideas to cut taxes for individuals and businesses. And it worked pretty good according to plan, except the few hitches. To pay for all of it, and in fact to pay for even a minuscule portion of it, what they had to do is get rid of a couple of tax breaks. The unreimbursed employee business expenses, which was beatable by uh, using an accountable plan with an employer. <clears throat> if you had your own business, of course, that would be simple enough to do. Just reimburse and there is no problem. <clears throat> now, the second big issue was the SALT deduction limits, the state and local income tax uh, uh, deduction limits. <clears throat> that was limited to $10,000, and that caused a lot of problems. And by the way, I'm out here out on my own farm, and I'm watching some ducks that I had that were born this year, so kind of tracking them around so I'm a little, little winded as they're a little faster than I am. <clears throat> and a muskrat. But what we have, let's get back to taxes. So what we have is this limitation on state and local taxes, and the problem that we have is that high tax states, including some states you wouldn't think of being as high tax, you know, maybe Texas or Oklahoma, things like that, these, these states also face some high taxes uh, when it came to that $10,000 limit. So what they wanted to do, this, uh, several of the states, is come up with these schemes to avoid that limit by putting money maybe into a charity, <clears throat> giving back credits, that kind of thing, and it really didn't work out very well. The IRS shot them down, uh, as well as the Treasury Department, <clears throat> as fast as they came out. Now, there's something that has come along since then, though, built upon something that already existed, and that is, if you have a pass-through entity, a small business, such as a partnership or an S-corporation, and you have non-resident members or owners, the surprise you always get is that you have to pay a deposit or pay the tax, so to speak, in the state where you're a resident or where, where the uh, business is domiciled. And then the non-residents will get a credit in their tax return forcing them to file their taxes. So <clears throat> I have a family limited partnership as a client and they have uh, eight, eight of the 10 partners are in Wisconsin and one is in Iowa and one is in Washington state. <clears throat> well, the out of state guys get a little upset because I have to withhold money and uh, pay it in and they get a credit on their tax return and they have to file a state, a state of Wisconsin tax return they don't care for it. <clears throat> now, take that a step further. Look at uh, the business tax, so to speak. So look, look at it this way. If you're, if you're a corporation, a C corporation, regular corporation, and you pay a state tax, it's deductible on your federal return. <clears throat> and if you are an individual, if you pay state taxes, they're deductible if you itemize and if you don't go over the limit. What the new pass-through entity tax scheme is, and it has so far, it seems to have received uh, the blessing of the IRS, is that you pay taxes at the entity level. So let's say uh, my, my business, I have a tax business. <clears throat> Wisconsin is one of the seven states so far that have passed legislation on this. And that means that I can take my business and I can pay taxes on the profit at the entity level, take a deduction on the federal return, get a credit my state of Wisconsin return, which I would use dollar for dollar to offset it, <clears throat> and therefore for I bypass the uh, uh, salt limit. Now, I don't itemize on my return, so it doesn't make a big difference, but I still get to double dip in that instance because in Wisconsin, if I do this, <clears throat> I can uh, get the tax credit for on the entity level, take the deduction, and then I would receive a credit on my return, and that would uh, give me my standard deduction for married filing joint, and it would give me this additional deduction at the entity level, which I wouldn't have before. So this new pass-through entity tax scheme is 
a pretty good idea. The biggest problem I see with it is there's a lot of complexity that can come into play. Uh, Connecticut, for example, <clears throat> is mandatory you do it, and all the rest of those states, as far as I can tell, are doing it on a, uh, 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 a voluntary basis, elective basis. <clears throat> so, a lot of mosquitoes out here tonight too, so that's an issue. But uh, the pass through entity tax scheme that is out there is in seven states right now, and more states are looking at passing it. I think you have to look at it as an individual, as a business owner. <clears throat> These can be powerful tools to reduce your taxes, and especially since we're probably looking at taxes going up in the near future uh, because of the large federal deficit, it might be a good idea to look at some of these things because even if they get rid of the salt tax limitation, they've brought in something new now that some people can use that will benefit regardless if the uh, tax laws change or not. So I hope you enjoyed the article I, I'm putting this with. I thought I'd just get a little walk out this afternoon as well. And uh, I'm trying out a new selfie stick and all that kind of stuff. So uh, pardon me if it's a little... A little uh, newish or a little little more bush league if you will uh, one I'm doing it in the, toward the evening here where the bugs are all pretty good I didn't spray myself down because I'm just testing the selfie stick and the little buttons on here so anyway you guys have a good one you enjoy uh, the article see if it works for you if it's in your state if it's not in your state it's probably coming pretty quick and that can help save you some tax dollars you have a great one thank you